Hello and welcome back, Automation Nation. Got a new game to try out here on the channel today. It just came out on Steam. It's called 64. Um, it's published by the same place or it's the same group that made like Clicker Heroes and a few other idle games that I've played in the past. Um, I don't know the dev individually, Oleg Danilov, but um, no, I'm curious. I saw a trailer for it. It seemed right up my alley, kind of a combination between like... Uh, automation game like factorio and an incremental game like cookie clicker or uh there's various examples out there um i want to check it out so here we're going to be starting up the first episode potentially a series uh that i want to try out see if this game's any good uh see where we go with it but get things started uh i noticed there is a dark mode option so my eyesight's as bad as it needs to be i'm happy to lean into a bit of a dark mode option here um currently i've sound cranked up i'll adjust that on the side if that uh ends up being too loud but uh i really don't know i've seen the trailer for this game but otherwise don't really know what i'm getting into i, I think we might as well get started where are you i'm literally in the middle of nowhere all right what do you see got a computer box AO1 not much there's this machine here it looks kind of familiar but I can't put my finger on it who cranks we hold it down I like that who we're farming something we're harvesting we're making cubes tell me you're not touching some random machine right now it's working just created something can I get, I can now click these out. Okay, always click on the cell underneath. I don't know what that means, but. Looks like we can harvest these. I'm gonna switch over to fast click mode, which is just two, <laughs> two hands on the mouse. It's a cookie clicker classic. It seems like you have to click the one at the front. Yeah, to get to the one at the back. Okay, and then we harvest some more. But now we get um, a new item. Uh, place this next to a cube to break it twice as fast. Requires an El Marine to operate. All right, well, it seems like it's worth it. We have 512, we wanna speed up the process. So we're gonna get this, it's like a harvester kind of thing. We'll see how it goes. So a D2 instead of a one And yeah, that is much easier to break. And still kind of impacts the ones further away, I think. Maybe, I'm not sure yet, but. Put a yellow stone inside this machine, some gold ingots el marine oh it maybe it's not working at all I, I i actually think that was like placebo we'll see here okay so how do i activate it i hold it down or i just click it okay so this one's on uh doo -doo -doo, come over all right so let's harvest some more so it generates what like eight blocks eight cubes theoretically 48 m minutes meters i don't know but this one it looks like it's online so i can't even really tell the difference that much oh but this one these ones have gold in them that's pretty cool you like that a different sound effect so it's cool yeah the two hands on the mouse two fingers back and forth definitely the strap so break it twice as fast but all right breaking it pretty quick either way I'm sure there'll be harder materials that are harder to break through though. But I think I want to try to get to quadruples the power of resource crushing process. Okay, that's going to take a lot of gold though. Dig down 64 oh, meters. Okay, that makes more sense. It's a distance of the game. I got an orange. It's an orange too. Oh, still gold. Okay. A different uh, lighting perspective on the gold. and I have to hold down in order for that to keep going. I believe machines influence each other when placed in adjacent or diagonal cells. For example, this fan needs to be placed next to the first machine to speed up the process. All right, channel cooler. Place this next to the cube extracting machine to extract cubes twice as fast. Which one's the cube extracting machine? This increases brake speed. Place next to the cube extracting machine. Okay, this extracts the cubes from the ground. So I don't have to hold it down as long, which I like. I'll put this here. 
What, what's a when it's okay? So I actually have to put it in the radius. There's like each block. Okay, so I get one less cube, but it's double speed. Seems okay. And maybe can apply to like a different AO one over here. Okay, I can't actually see it. It's like underneath, and I don't have enough for the reverse valve. But I'll get that. Okay, is this one still fueled? Okay, I guess the yellow block indicates that it has what it needs. Yeah, the order of operations part is kind of weird. I don't know why it doesn't just... Is this in range? Well, let's see pretty quickly. Couldn't tell you. Yeah, the interface is still taking some getting used to. I feel like the, I put the fan behind the blocks and it's not doing anything. I think I have to put the fan down when there's no blocks. And I don't think I can sell it back. But we will see. Yeah, targeting is a little weird sometimes. So I would argue that's not in range. Yeah, that is not. So we're going to have to just put another one down. Doesn't need any fuel, but it does seem to be a little bit cleaner. Picking up seven blocks a lot faster. Happy with that. So there's kind of like a starting wind up, and then it just puts out a bunch of blocks really quickly. Yeah, there's also a reverse valve later. It prevents the cube extracting machine from resetting to the original position. So basically, it, does, it gets rid of that wind-up. But it needs a Karenite. So there's materials. There's a Karenite and Elmarine. Well, Karenite's pretty easy to get our hands on, so... Yeah, I imagine that's going to be pretty nice, too. If it just takes up one slot, that's okay. I put my maybe the destabilizer got placed too far away it did okay yeah you can see where it links up what blocks it links up to so in theory I should just be like just spawning like four like it doesn't actually matter if it spawns four or eight if we don't reset the position I can just like spawn the max of whether that's four cubes eight cubes whatever it still I have to hold it down to get it right so a few mispositionings early on but just learning When I get that reverse valve, it'll be nice and clean. There we are. So that will affect machines here. Little adjacency bonus. Does it work? Okay. So as long as it has that cube, I won't have any wind up to worry about. Which is nice. I still have five cubes, and they are. Most of them are breaking fast. I guess I could put a destabilizer on either side. If I'd move this, I don't think I'd pick it up or sell it or anything, but theoretically, I should have put like some on this half but i'm sure i'll get like another ao one to play around with later so i'm not too worried about the correct setup right now right now it's only these three what i could just do is this just quick bam 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 so they're next to the destabilizer and then just respawn those and not even worry about the two in the back i think that's valid, like a valid strat Now that I don't have to recharge the funnel. Is that clicking two at a time? No. Just weird UI things. So, one thing about incremental games is they can feel a little repetitive at times. And then right when it starts, if it's designed well, right when it starts to feel a little too repetitive, that's when you break into a new tech that kind of revolutionizes how it flows. So, they're designed to be, just like the beginning of Factorio or any like automation game, they're designed to be slow and deliberate and meticulous. Um, from the beginning and the idea there is that you ca that makes you feel the impact of the upgrades as time goes by you feel more powerful you feel like you can do more things as you unlock more it's like you don't start off with robots in most factorio games because once you unlock them it makes a big difference to your your workflow it's the same with like the speed boots and all that stuff so like it's intentionally designed to be a little bit um, obtuse, but here we go. Auxiliary pump, a reverse valve upgrade, provides pressure to a source channel if placed next to it. Well, I don't know what that means at all. Additional pumps do not increase the pressure in a source channel. Provides so it 
it does upgrade the reverse valve. Looks like it. Does that mean it expands how it's digging area or no? Provides pressure. Oh, I have to put stuff in it. Okay. Put my Elmarine in it. And now we'll see if it does anything different. Oh, it's just automatically mining now. Okay, I like that. Still, unfortunately, not that great because of my positioning of the uh, destabilizers. Hopefully, I get a chance to redo this <laughs> at some point. Because my ideal would be I'd put a destabilizer on each side. Oh, that one's not even working right now. I'll have to keep an eye on that. Boom, boom, fill it up. And it's still only doing one at a time, right? So it's not that great. I see. It seems to have replaced them in the order they were mined out. Mm -hmm. We can already see this one's like almost empty. It makes a little flash when it completely empties out. We gotta put it, fill it back up. So at a certain point, it's gonna be about refueling these machines rather than, um, well, like, definitely placement is gonna matter. Um, positioning is gonna be important, but the core of it's gonna be go from putting machines down to, and, oh, this guy finished up, so he needs help. Okay, cool. To then, um, yeah, the core of it's gonna go from putting down machines to speed up the manual process to all the machines do it automatically, but you have to fuel them. And then theoretically, the next step past that is they fuel themselves, but there's a, this other complicated process instead. And that's kind of, yeah, you look at the tiers of Factorio, you see early pro, uh, material processing being along those lines. Um, like, hand, putting, for example, put hand fueling coal burners. Anything that requires coal that you have to walk over and put the coal in it, that's this is the stage we're at right now. But very quickly it can turn into something that has its own fuel source and then we go to the next level. So we'll have to see if this is worthwhile. I don't really want the whole video to be just this bit here. So I'm thinking that we might try to skip ahead if we don't find something new soon. That being said, we do have a new destabilizer quadruples the power of the resource crushing process okay so it's just it's just fast clicking it's just fast clicking we need to fill it up though it takes a lot of fuel a lot of my gold is already gone but you can i like that you can visually see and it's different for each one like this one has a a, a big plate this one has like a little candle but yeah you can basically see its impact directly I'm trying to remember, what do the fans do again? It just speeds up how quickly they come out of the ground, okay. Additional cool, I was wondering, additional coolers increase this effect. I was wondering, could I just like stack some fans then? After I get some space here. If I did this. If I could just stack all the fans. Wouldn't that theoretically make it so I could just mine one really fast? Ooh, I got a purple. Yeah, that's definitely not the layout that you'd want to optimally go for, but it's not bad. I wish that you could kind of pre-fuel them. Like, I don't know, you get in that situation, like, you play a first-person shooter and you reload when your magazine is only, like, one quarter empty or only missing a couple shots. That's kind of the mentality I get into. But it's like, I, see, I know that's, that's this one's going to empty out in it shortly. So I feel like being able to bring it from, like, 10% to full is reasonable, even if you can't don't want to just have them top it off all the time. All right, is there a new machine with the purple? Yes, there is. We currently crush the resources. Paste next to a cube. And requires our new material, Quanatite. And then there's Demolish. Destroys machine, returning 50% of resources. That's really good. Um, so we're going to do that quite a bit here uh, after we get a few more purples. For now, um, mm -hmm. okay, so this, um, maybe we did the Demolish first. 
We do the crusher here. All right, this actually gives us the ability to operate in the way we would like to. Oh, we don't have any more purple, so we're not gonna see the effect of that just yet, but. All right, we're, we're cooking. Like this guy obviously isn't doing anything. There's a fan back here that's not doing anything, and there's one guy in my way, so. We'll see how it goes. Okay, we got the purple, feel this thing. Let's see how fast it, okay, that's kinda slow, guy. I can imagine if you have a bunch of these, though, it's pretty musical. And I don't even really want it to farm this until I fix my mistakes. Which I should be able to do shortly. Yeah, I have one from purples now, so I can now demolish this. I wonder if I get the material it's holding as well. Maybe, maybe not. But now that gives me space to then destabilize. Um here and then i'll do the industrial one later but that means is basically the two that are next to this guy will be mined out pretty quickly but we also don't currently have a reverse valve so we want to get that oh we want to feel the reverse valve so we hold position all right seeing how it works but Yeah, with all this stuff, I'm, I'm not sure. I'm curious if it's... So it depends if it's multiplicative, the fa effect of the fan, or what it says, um, yeah, extract machine to extract cubes twice as fast. So I feel like, actually, I basically had an optimal strat already. I, it looked, it wasn't in the right organization necessarily, but it seems like if I could just do this, then it would just, okay, and that's terrible. <laughs> Um, did I just, <laughs> if I didn't have any purples, I might have just like bricked myself. I might have not been able to continue because I've blocked all these spots. But yeah, we'll put it here, uh, which is best location wise just be because of the, oh, I don't have automated building anymore. Where it's, which one's that? Wait, is this? Uh, yeah, I don't even know what these things are anymore. So this is the industrial destabilizer. So an upgraded version of that, and then I had the auxiliary pump before. That's what I. That's what I demolished and didn't replace. Not that it was that great, but also this guy is this guy doing anything? It's just really slow. So I'll want those later when I'm like factory building. But right now, when I'm in manual mode, it doesn't help me that much. I actually feel like I'd want to get rid of these little machines. Like these automated machines. Once I can make an AO1, another AO1, then it'll change. But for right now, since I've stuck with one AO1, what I want to do is turn these into fans. So I'm just going to destroy this. I'm wishy washing a bit, but. Um, yeah, basically just make it really fast. And the dis destabilizers, additional destabilizers do increase this effect. So I can fill these up. Oh, okay, I like this. This is going to be really good. Okay, I have to fill this back up. All right, I've got a strap for now. And we'll unlock some new automated machines later, but for right now, I know exactly what I want to do. And it's kind of taking advantage of the, the manual skills. So we'll fill this guy up, this guy up, this guy up. They do probably, it does probably cost a lot of resources to maintain this though. If they're all losing resources every time a block pops up, you might argue that that's not that great, but we are getting much deeper in, in terms of meters as well. So what are we missing? Uh, this one slowly reacts granitite with carinite to produce L marine. So basically this creates yellow by combining purple and black which we don't really want right now because purple is our rarest. But later, maybe Elmarine's super useful, and yeah. So I'm gonna fill this slot. Do I care about the automated thing? Or do I just wanna go full manual? I think I don't. So I'm just gonna go right now and go channel cooler. I could go cooler or I could go... Well, the, cool the coolers don't cost any 
resources to maintain. So I can see myself going that route. But it seems like it doesn't want me to have a fan right now. Why is that? I have too many. I'm at, I'm at the cap. Hmm. Hold Alt. Take a closer look. Press Q over an empty cell to pick a demolishing tool. Okay. But why can't I put a cooler here? Why is that illegal? I got four coolers on this guy. And apparently I'm not allowed to. Can I put another destabilizer here? What just happened? Oh, that ran of energy? Okay. All right. Well, I'll just go with the other option then. I'll just destabilize. Quadruple's the power of the resource crushing process. Yeah, so this is just basically explaining the fact that it all spawns in one spot, and now I can just break it really quickly. But I do requ does require more El Marine to farm this out. So we got to keep that in mind. Is this worth it? We will see. Yeah, once I can get a, more of these a a a one drills, then automation is more relevant. But right now, we're just doing this. I gotta put like my mouse front and center. A keyboard's not actually useful. Is it like WSD movement? Yeah, you can like pan around a bit. Oh uh, yeah, they they give hotkeys like Q and stuff. But right now, we're just mining. We don't care for this guy. We'd... So the Q, I meant Q over an empty cell to pick a demolishing tool. Oh, these are demolishing tools. I was thinking demo demolishing my buildings, but it's actually demolishing the material. I see. Maybe, maybe I do, maybe I don't. I'm not sure. Either way, there's mining to be had. Clone machines or destroy them if I click on a free cell first, just like Factorio. Alt helps to see behind tall machines. Cool. Bluestone now, or is it purple? It sounds like an antique brass candlestick. I think I could use it to remove misplaced machines. All right. Interesting what approach to a tutorial is like a narrative of somebody explaining what they're seeing in front of them and getting extra detail that wouldn't necessarily be self-explanatory. So where's my, um, so I don't really have the material to get these big destabilizers. But I'm getting a lot more of that purple, so maybe I do want to make that um, chemistry vat, whatever it is. See, our yellow isn't really getting much higher. Our purple black is, though. And that's because I'm burning so much yellow on the machines here. Which is why we would want a little bit of this. All right. And then we fill it up with stuff, and it starts to give me some nice juicy yellow to use. Okay, apparently two weeks have passed in real time. Like a time dilation effect. Gotta feed the machines. Yeah, there's not really a lot of extra detail in terms of like the consumption rate of the machines. You know they require X amount of yellow, but how quickly does that go away that they have to be restocked? Is it more efficient to have the D2 or the D3? No, no. And these guys full? Can I? Okay, still working on that. More of these, please. Yeah, so we're just farming purple right now, and we're turning the purple into yellow over time. Hopefully at a decent rate. We'll see the return on those in a bit. 
entropy resonator. Period crushes. Okay. I do like that there's sound effects and there's visual flashes for when stuff expires, which is good. Very good design in terms of making sure you're aware of what needs help. And then there's, yeah, like I said, there's unique visuals for each um, block, um, for each machine in terms of if it's empty, where it puts its fuel, how what the fuel looks like is, true, true, it has a different design for each one, which I like. Do I have to fill it back up? No, it looks like we're good. Now I got a lot of yellow. Okay, what do I need here? I need black. Okay, so I'm not getting enough black, which is not really being used as fuel, so it just means I've built too many of these uh, chemistry vats. But we're about to be able to upgrade one of these. I mean, it's already pretty fast. It's one, what, two clicks? How fast do I want it to be? <laughs> one click? Like. Yeah, I don't know if I really need to upgrade these industrial stabilizers unless, again, they're more efficient, which I have no way of knowing. Well, I have to fill it. I was like, this is worse. So two clicks. All right, fill up the vat, get the yellow. Yeah. Extracts resources and places is, oh, okay. We did get new AO1, 512. So we had to get to 512 blue to unlock this. Now the game changes. We'll farm a little bit more, um, but I'm gonna wanna design like an automated process. This is where factor, factory comes in. You know, it's not even really incremental just yet. Um, we'll see if it has more elements of that, but it really does seem like it's a uh, um, more manual, factory game that starts you off pretty slow to introduce each of the different concepts but then creates all these little adjacency bonuses and stuff like that i do like grid-based adjacency type design uh, i think that right now in like factoria the only adjacency design is in the what you call it um the nuclear reactors and that's not that inspiring because they only mesh with each other, not with other machines. When I, play, I remember playing XCOM 1 uh, a long time ago. XCOM Enemy un Unknown, I guess I should say, technically, and not the first one. Um, but back then, I loved the idea of putting the buildings next to each other means that they have different values, that they do different things. Um, so the whole base building construction aspect is something that I've kind of played around with uh, in personal notes of like, oh, if I were to develop an idle game, like a cookie clicker incremental game, I'd like to have like a map that you can build buildings on and design it with the idea that where you place them matters relative, relative to each other. So if you put like a granary next to a wheat field, then it's going to be more efficient for the workers, that kind of thing. So I, li I like adjacency and I think that this is, you know, it's not boosts. It's not like efficiency adjacency. It seems like it's more like a uh, forced adjacency in some cases, but there's there's room. There's room for individual designs and stuff. All right, so let's go ahead and get another AO1 going. This one's not going to... We're going to have one manual AO1 that we're, we can still kind of do in this way. I'm just now realizing I'm not like properly um, saturating this one, but... Okay, let's get lots of yellow. It does take a lot of black to fill these up, but... It's all good. So I can move over here. I can zoom out. Not yet. I'm assuming I can later. Maybe not. All right. So we'll give it its own space right here. What do we need to make a good automated system? Well, of course, we're going to need um, the thing that actually extracts from the ground. This one, right? Yeah. So this is an auxiliary pump, and it's going to... Oh, but I need the reverse valve first. So reverse valve, and we're already broke. All right, we'll slowly build that up to be a, a nice little side hustle. 
Um, maybe I should stop on the yellow so hard. Yeah, none of this requires that much yellow. I'm going to stop using these vats for a little bit. But yeah, over time it'll pay for itself. And then I can build more of that and design in different ways and get more upgrades. It's going to be great. So it seems like just hitting a certain resource tier is your um, unlocking method. I mean, even this strat that I'm using, I, I, I can see a lot of people not eat going this route and trying to like automate it from the beginning. I think that's totally valid and fine. It's just I can click fast, so why not just not worry about the automated harvesting so much until now. Until now I have the AONs, I have more space, I can do more things. So now we want to... Now it should, when I put this in, it should start mining manually. Good. Um, then of course we'll need to crush the resource. And we'll make sure those resources are crushable by putting in destabilizers on each side, I believe. The very least on that side, for sure. But I think on this side, too. Yeah, and then we'll upgrade those when we can. So now it's going to be easier to crush them. This guy's pumping all the time. I mean, this is your basic stuff. So um, we'll have to keep an eye on the the rate if we need more fans if we need more upgraded destabilizers well, once we get the upgraded destabilizers i think we'll need a couple fans but we'll just leave it for right now let us do its its thing we'll do our thing because right now it seems totally fine because i guess you'd want maybe more Okay, I can see where I've done this wrong. The extractor shouldn't be... This all should be on the outside, right? Okay. I'm recognizing a mistake here. Okay, so philosophically, we don't want anything next to the AO1s because they're expensive. They're 512, right? I mean, this guy has to be next to the AO1. There's no going away from that. But these guys could be like hitting one, two, three spots. So that's what I need to be doing. I need to keep my materials flowing to kind of fix mistakes, but... The idea is we can put a stabilizer on each side of this, and it will be pretty effectively like harvesting one, three of the eight, or three of the seven that are spawning. But yeah, the fans need to be adjacent to the AO1, the, if I should call it the same, extracting channel. The fans and the auxiliary need to be adjacent to the channel, but everything else can be whatever. I guess I might as well make a upgrade to my, this operation here, make the auxiliary pump happen. I'd like to say this is free money, but obviously it costs fuel as well. And so your raw materials being the fuel, it's like, imagine if you had to use iron plates to to fuel your iron plate supply. It's a little awkward um, at times, but it's just a different way of doing it. I don't even know if these guys are helping that much in terms of reducing the rate. sound effects though. I like the audio design I was worried this would just be like a mobile game and technically it could still work in that context from what I've seen so far but for the most part it definitely does it seems like it's designed with like a it's not like low quality grade uh visual and sound design which is good because you get bored of that pretty quick I imagine And there's like different ratios of needs, like the destabilizers require more yellows uh, per unit than the others, which is interesting as well. So we can upgrade a destabilizer. I think I wanted to get the auxiliary pump upgrade over here. 
since I already have the um, reverse valve, I figured I might as well. Alright, so this will be an auxiliary now. And fuel it up. It does fuel based on yellows instead of blacks, but it does seem kind of nice. Click hold down to chart to dig, click to mine. And it does feel like that rate has increased a bit because it's kind of already getting started by the time I'm going back to start mining. I'm of the opinion that I probably want to start doing that automated co automated collection stuff now. So we'll do that, fill that up, and again, it takes a while, even with the destabilizers, it still seems to take a while, you can see, but it's, it's doing it. Probably don't need as many fans, or I could just upgrade the destabilizers, we'll see. Right now, we just have a lot of stuff we want to get. All right, so what's wrong with this? The the digger is not digging. That's okay. We can fix that. And yeah, it does feel like everything's kind of expensive. Part of that is because I keep on reselling stuff. Either because I'm using a lot of fuel or because I keep on reselling stuff. I'm wasting a lot of resources. So we've been at this stage for a bit, but it also gives me a lot of time to think about different ways I want to approach it. So I thought I hit dark mode and then it didn't really seem to respect that. Maybe I'm wrong, but is it just the menu is dark mode? That's not that best, but yeah, it's kind of hard to make a full dark mode of the game. There's some games that get away with it. There's the mini Metro game. It's pretty good for that, but graphically this has more going on. So a full negative is not really realistic, I guess. Okay, I definitely want to destabilize more over here. Um, so we're going to go ahead and... It's an upgrade, so we got to start there. But hopefully that will allow it to... Yeah, quadruple that rate. It is still digging one at a time, right? Not multiple. Okay. I missed a lot of the uh, the lore here. No, not too much. <laughs> He's in a place he doesn't know where he is. Two minutes feel it. What feels like two minutes is two weeks. Been there. All right. Keep the mining going. Another destabilizer here would be great. Or I could destabilize here and then make another automated miner. I do feel like focusing all your energy on one single spot kind of feels better than all eight. I got a red beta piling. Like what if I just put another purple here? Um, Cause I've got a lot already going there. Uh, I need a free fuel that guy. Most of these are going to need fuel in a second here. So I'm trying to think, what is the advantage of having like more than two blocks? What two, what, two blocks is better because you can then be having the extracting channel working while the mining is occurring on a different, on the second node. But having more blocks than that seems a bit excessive actually. Can I unlock anything because the red? Oh yes I can, hokey smokes. This one needs 32,000. I think I'm, I have six, so I'm a little short of that, but um, so this is a transporting resources thing. I thought it all jumped to your inventory, so that's quite curious. Channels resources via stream. This is called extracting channel. 
so there's maybe it just makes like um it harvests in a big like well there's exactly one that harvests in a really big square or something how's machine recycling which return 90 percent okay so these are like the the end upgrades reclaims quanatite purple from black sediments in the presence of catalyst okie dokie yeah um so if you do the math and you think like okay if i have two purples they double the extraction rate then you really don't need this many yellows right so i could like get rid of one of these see this q button doesn't really work the same way i'd like it to unless yeah so really it should be half of the block is surrounded by purple half the block is surrounded by yellow and by that i mean the demolishers and the i don't know the names uh destabilizers so if we have already have four yellows i can have space for three purples that's pretty good ratio I'm assuming they both work together. Might be wrong. Yeah, sounds good. Okay. So the goal is to actually turn this into an automated one. It's going very well. I already have the cooling. I already have so many good materials here ready to roll. Just a few small adjustments and it can be pretty nice on the automate side. I'm probably one of the few players that have gone manual for this long, honestly. Um, but now we do this. So that's where, yeah, two blocks would be kind of nice because it keeps on stopping when it doesn't need to necessarily. Okay, well, we'll just set up in the future to allow for two blocks so that we don't have any downtime for our machines. But if we're mining it super fast with all these yellows online, then maybe that doesn't matter. So yeah, it's like a whole breaking meta thing. I really wish it wouldn't scroll up sometimes. Can I freeze the... I'm just not always reading, you know? Except the strange rock up north. What the? I can't. I'm lost. What have I done? All right, well. All right, I'm going to ignore that for now. And just keep doing what I'm doing. Okay, this guy needs help. So if I have two auxiliaries, would that speed it up, up the the spawn rate? <sighs> yeah, there's a lot of questions. It should tell me on the tooltip, right? Auxiliary pump. Additional pumps do not increase the pressure in the source channel. See, when I first read that, I had no idea what it was saying, and now I have much better understanding of how this is flowing. Um, so yeah, fans is the only thing that increases speed. It looked like I was capped at four fans per A01. Um, which would mean that this is as fast as it can mine, which means I do need to set up two blocks for them to break. So I'll have to think of the best way to position all that. As I farm more materials. I'm not even really giving those guys a chance. Let's uh, increase destabilization. Fill that up. 64,000 stones. I feel like I've used a lot of them for other reasons, but it's all good. 
Okay. It's getting there. One more destabilizer here, upgraded destabilizer here, and it will be as as efficient as it can be on a single spawn structure. And then I'll do a dual spawn design as well. And once I get a lot of these down, which I, I don't have that much purple to work with, so I can't really be making that many anyways. Wait, does that cost twice as much as before? There might be a limited number of these, okay. That's good to know. I think it was 512 for my first one. So if it's a thousand for the next one, then yeah, we gotta be very intentional about how we work around these, which I think makes sense. The whole idea is to make the most of these AO1s. They didn't even give me a second one for a long time, so. All right, so here's the good big one here, bam. All right, so there really is a finite amount of progress you can do in a certain span of time. It's not like, like Factor, if you have a tool assisted speed run, you can beat the game in like 40, like 20, 40 minutes, something like that. Because it's a lot of it's about inputs, a lot of it's about um, designing things quickly or having designs already kind of ready to go. Um, and designing things to move rapidly. With this, it feels like it is limited by how much the AOMs can pump, which is, you know, based around the fact they can only have four fans, one auxiliary, from what I can tell. Are these fans even in range, though? Am I being... No, they are, right? Yeah, okay. Better to speed it up? Yeah, I guess I need to do both. Slowly make our way to his purple. So, like, I don't want to spend purple on yellow when purple's my main way of getting extracted extractors. I think that's a better name for it. That's the satisfactory um, mining drill. Extractors? Maybe I'm thinking of StarCraft. I don't know. Either way. Here's something that you can always just kind of... The, the, the idle part is where, like, you could just set this up to walk away, just refuel the machines every 10 minutes, and you'd make some some decent progress in the game if you didn't want to try to rush through it, which is fine. Not the route I'm going, obviously, but we'll see. So these guys have... I need to keep this online, then. I need to try to continue to push this to be better at something. So right now, it, I have kind of a, a triple set up here where it's it's hitting three bricks. Is that what I want? I'm just trying to visualize now. Okay, if I want it to only hit two bricks, then there's not a lot of people places I can put these purples. If I need like three purples, theoretically they're optimal. Well, they could be on different bricks, but then they're not all working at once. So they, you could just put a purple here and a purple here. That's two purples hitting that's still three different bricks. There's not actually a way... You can have one purple on one brick. Okay, we'll just do a, tri a triple then. So if I put purple here, then I can't have yellow next to it. This is getting pretty... Maybe this is almost optimal here. Yeah. Oh, but you can stop a spawn. You can block a spawn. Of course you can. I don't know why I forgot about that part. So let's say we block up one of the spawns. So this reclaims. We already knew that. Gets, um... This is actually pretty good. And recycling tower. I think I'll get... I mean, it's, it seems sounds like a one-time thing. Why does it have a radius? There's literally one recycling tower in the entire game. And I have to know... I think that's for, like, if I make a huge mistake, I need to buy this. Can you recycle the recycling tower? <laughs> um, theoretically. So, like, you, you put down the recycling tower, you recycle a big mistake, and then you demolish it and put it down somewhere else later. All right, let's just m mess with this real quick. I need 4,000. It's pretty far off of that. Everything good fuel-wise, good. Except for that right there. Yeah, so anyways, I want to focus on 
building this out a bit better. And then we can soon get to our third extractor. What do you need? What is your catalyst? 4,000. So it makes purple. How much purple do you think it makes? It needs yellow, red, and black to make this. Um, yeah, we'll see how much we get out of it. It's like a little whirlpool thing. Kind of cool. Yeah, I like that the base material is still very relevant in everything so far. To the point that that can be the actual thing that I'm waiting on. Got plenty of yellow on standby if I need it. So, yeah, no, for people, anybody playing this on their own, um, you don't need uh, three Karenite enrichment vans, uh, vats so quickly. Uh, those are just going to sit there. One maybe, but even then, I kind of want my purple more than I want my yellow. We'll see. And of course, as we add different types of stones, I think it's more li less likely that we'll see like the purple or the yellow spawn, for example, because you have to make room for red. There's a lot of red. What the heck? Why are there so many reds down this far? Five. So does the distance matter too? Where I, I set a new AO1, this one's a 98 meter, so we were seeing no reds on it. And then this one's the deepest one, so it's got full reds. So I need more purple. I actually need to go back to a higher level of, uh, you know, vertical terrain is virtually kind of what we're looking at. That's weird. Pump station. All right. Got new, something new. An auxiliary pump upgrade provides quadruple pressure to a source channel if placed next to it. A lot of yellow and re some red to operate. So basically, it will upgrade this, but I've got a farm in order to get that. I guess that works. It'll no matter what. There's there's black all the way down, so I'm always gonna get Karenite. And I imagine quadruple pressure is gonna make this fairly close to automatic. Oh, we got more answers. Let's see. Um, tell me about the machines. What do you mean? What are they? What do they do? How do they work? Well, they look fancy with some cables and wires and stuff. Very descriptive. Yeah, I, at first I really liked the idea that there would be like an overarching plot line, a story, but I don't always feel like when, whenever I get to a new tier and it starts scrolling text, I want to be looking at the machines, you know? So it's harder to do it in this form, I guess. It's like I imagined if I was playing Factorio and I was driving around uh, in my car and then it pops up with a text block that I have to click out away from. I'm not reading that right then. I'm like, I just found oil, you know, whatever. There's a big plastic box with a copper coil at the top where a blue stone goes. And there's a big label saying E-O-1-S-R on the side. Entropy radiation. I didn't make them from cubes. It's trying to be meta, but... It's kind of sounding like uh, somehow Palpatine returned kind of descriptors. It's like, yeah, I don't really know. It's just, it is. Okay, do I got my pump station? Ah, I'm going to commit. I'm going to put the pump station here. I'm going to get some yellow, or I can get the yellow from these bad boys. Bam. Okay, they already gave me their materials, so never mind. So now it's super slow. I regret my decision. Okay, that's fine. If I hold it down... It'll be fine. How much do I need? 256. Oh, the, but the yellow's not spawning from this. I guess this guy's on, on hold until either this finishes or I get some more from here. So. I could spend more on this, but then what, you know? Back to the basics here. 
At least we're getting yell out of this. Yeah, the the implied like vertical terrain, you think like Minecraft, how far you have to dig down to get certain materials is kind of interesting as a concept because if you really care about purple and you don't have whatever vat you need to create purple, you've got to be somewhere between level 100 and 600 in this uh, spacing. I wonder if it resets at a certain point or you just reset through new um, extractors. All right, get that guy refueled. Still have the 256. Can we get it from here? Not yet. Almost. So I think it. I won't have to click it to ex get the yellow. I think it just pops in my inventory, and then I have to click to recharge them. All right, there's the yellow. That's all the yellow we need. Okay. The vat's coming in. All right, so we filled this vat. Now it should go speed run. That's what we wanted. All right, so this setup works really well. And honestly, the pumping downtime at this point is so low, between four fans and one super auxiliary, the pump station, that like getting a second block isn't gonna speed, it only would negate the little one, like half of a second of it respawning, which is not bad, all factors considered. Hmm. So yeah, we need to be careful where we put the purples. But again, if we just fill these slots, then it doesn't really matter, right? So all we need to do, really, is just put like fans and stuff here. We put a fan here, and we put a fan here. I don't want to put a fan there, I want to put a destabilizer there. Um, but now that only two spots can spawn. So we'll again do this. Well, well, it seems like yellow and blue stones are not infinite, so I should really invest in those converters or a new mine. So do I have a converter that makes blue, is my question. Burns red to produce black and trace amounts of other elements. Interesting. Again, no ratios, no certainty that it's going to be all that worthwhile, but presumably it will help somehow. Okay, reclaims. Okay, so this, this one makes the, the blue one though, right? Okay. So I guess we'll do that because then we get more pumps. So yeah, we'll want to keep these Karenite sumps going. This guy's looking pretty good. And we're working on getting this one online in a real way. So we'll want to upgrade the yellow one and we'll want to drop a new blue or purple extractor. Or auto miner, whatever you want to call it. I guess... It just requires a lot of red. And since we have excess of red, makes sense. We'll just go ahead and do that. I wonder why it's an adjacency thing, though. Yeah, I'm sorry. 640 meters getting a little achievement for that. That's cool. It's going to cost 8,000. So that guy's not... Oopsie. Helping for a while. And we got some yellow. Think, think, think. It's like so slow comparatively. Once you get the force amplifiers or force multipliers, really, of all this stuff, it really uh, helps with the process. So we'll need a destabilizer on this side, right? Yeah, so we definitely need a purple here. So we kind of want one of these to be a destabilizer too. Interesting. Can you chill for a sec? Yeah. And then we really need to get a new entropy resonator. Which requires mostly black, which is what we're gonna make from the red thing once we get there, but we're not there yet. These guys looking a little light. There we go, there's one. 
Entry rose and arrow. Okay, so we got two of these now, which is what we're looking for. Feel up that bad boy. Get some channel coolers here. Not ready for that yet. As soon as we have enough more resources, we'll do that. For right now, we're just mining. Our next goal is going to be to get a third AO1, which means we need some blue, which will come from this guy. So we need black. So this makes black and others, and this makes blue. And we're just going to keep these rolling. And we're going to use this only when we really need to. Resonator online. Isn't this just the most efficient? It still feels like this one spam generation spam is like really, really optimal. Yeah, because the the issue with this two node build is that the destabilizers aren't going to hit both of them. Usually you're going to have twice as many destabilizers, which takes twice as many resources to make. So we'll do this, do that, fill that up. It's all good. And now we just need to upgrade the destabilizers. And like I think I said before, the pur two purples... I can have two purples on each of them, but I can't have three purples on each of them like I have here. So it's like we don't have any pump downtime, but it feels like the mining downtime is the longer part. It's like if you just count the seconds right here, it's like... Yeah, right now, as with my current resources, mine, di mining or breaking the blocks is much more time consuming than picking them. So I kind of feel like my first design was the best one once I got around to it. Because right now, yeah, if you just think about it this way, all eight spots around this brick are useful. Either it's creating it, or four of the, half of them are speeding it up, or the, and the other three are digging. So, kind of want to go back to that method. I don't see why I couldn't either. Um, so we're going to have one, two, three. So I just put like a blue, a blue here and a yellow here, and I can just still mine off of that. Once, once it, if I don't have the super pump, then I think the two node thing makes sense. But the super pump's so fast, it basically is no time at all with the, all the fans, anyways. Okay, and this guy is going to be useless. It looks like so one, two, three. I feel like I'm missing a spot. Is it because it's on the diagonal? Okay, so maybe I want to build around this, because the diagonal actually gives you an extra bit of time. Or a bit of spacing. Yeah, I wish I had thought about this beforehand, but... Factory must grow. You just gotta keep clicking. Okay. Did this uh, big one finish? Oh, I still need a bit more for it. This will give me blue, so we're going to keep that guy going when we can. It does require a lot. Yeah, I gotta get the machines though, and the machines require a lot of black as well, so... And this is like exclu turning exclusively red. Soon I'm going to have more red than black by a large margin, which I guess is what this uh, machine is for, right? 8200, that's what we gotta look out for. 8200 red will turn the machine on. Yeah, I was looking at it, I was trying to figure out why this setup 
that ha would have less fans in this setup and it's because of the fact that the brick spawns in the diagonal you get this entire outer layer which gives you a little bit more than if you were just building on the side so we do want to kind of force the diagonal um, which one is more efficient to do at this point How much does this resonator cost? 5,000? Some are most expensive. Compared to industrial destabilizer, 5,000 as well. Sounds about, either way. Would I, if I destroy one, this one or this one, it's gonna cost about the same. Some of this was not fueled. I, I want my fuel refuels to be in sync, but not always going to be an option. 8,000 red going into this thing. It'll probably take a long time, it looks like. But we'll see what we get out of it. Probably not going to notice it, but whatever. If I get a lot of black, that'll help me build a lot of stuff. So Right now, I'm just going to help this guy just like Han and... Fans aren't expensive, right? They're pretty cheap. 2,000? Still more than expected, actually. Not a lot of yellow, though, so it depends on what resource you value, I guess. I'm gonna be it seems like by the time you get to like a thousand it's just gonna be pure red unless a new thing emerges pretty soon I forgot to check volume level I think they're fine yeah I was just comparing it to other another game before so I imagine it's fine but you never know it's like a cube 6400 times no problem at all Cookie clicker scales coming in. Alright, I think I got enough raw material. 24,000. Okay, I did actually catch it. So we jumped up a massive amount of black. We can build anything we want other than another AO1 extractor. So that means we should finally decide if we're doing on this side or that side. One destabilizer doesn't cost much at all, so I don't care to destroy this. It's much more, do I care to destroy the industrial stabilizer, 5,300, or the resonator, 5,160. I'll destroy the resonator. So destroy that. We don't need it. Um, I don't know why Q doesn't work. Is it right click? Is it something else? Oh, so this is a clone. Okay. I feel like there was some mention of it being a demolishing thing, but I might have misinterpreted that as... They use the word demolish here, but then also I think it refers to the machines as demo demolition machines. So, whatever. We're going to be building around this corner right here. So that means we want to block these two off with fans and stuff. Okay. Four fans. Now I want like an extractor here. Destabilizer, I mean. Cool, got that. Destabilizer here. Cool. Upgrade this one. This is where the game really begins. All right, we just got a huge chunk of material. Like I said, it's just pure red bricks at this point, it looks like. What the cool thing is, though, we can actually get something out of that with this uh, machine, so. Doesn't feel entirely useless. We didn't have that machine, obviously. We're just toast, but not even that far down. 730, and it's already one resource. I hope. I'm curious if that's just like permanently red at this point. All right, so one, two, three, four. So we want to get this guy. Cool. So now, now we just need super pumps, and we need. 
Let's make sure these are all filled properly. Looks like that one might not be. I need 64 yellows. So I need more yellow. That goes in the thing. I like what I'm seeing, though. I think we're in a pretty good spot. Auxiliary pump, not what we need. We need the improved destabilizer, 383. Okie dokie. In the meantime, just keep on sustain on this one. So are we already out of gold at 250? And we have a little bit of gold. I like the sound effect for the blue, for sure. The red doesn't really sound like much of anything. I just make them from Q I don't understand. I don't know what's inside. Yeah, that does sound weird. By the way, I seem okay. I already read all that. At the very least, I'd like to be able to like, click this area here, and it should expand all the way to the top, so I can just kind of don't have to feel like I'm scrolling up all the time. If I missed it, but alas, here we are. So if I need yellow, it's gonna be from these. And it seems like I do need yellow. And I forgot the material for these, but I think it's blue and black. So basically, I want to keep this one running. And these ones running. All three of these machines seem super relevant. Honestly, we should just try to keep them all running all the time. There we go. Big yellow pop. Yeah, black and blue. And looks like that'll help out a lot too. Okay, cool. So that one, of course, we need. And now we could do industrial destabilizer. Yeah, or do we want to do the super pump first? What's that require? Pump station, 512 and 1024. Good call. I think they both have value. Here's how long it'll take me to get the yellows. Probably not that long. Oh, God, not probably longer when I have to fill, fill these things all the way back up, though. Yeah, we're going to need a lot of yellow. Well, at least it gives you plenty of time to, like, figure out how you want to approach it. I thought that I would have gotten a lot more, like, I thought we would have had a lot more blue to work. What just happened? Did I mess up? Okay. Yeah. So I can't scroll up. It said there was a rock up here, but I'm also not wanting to be, like, out in the nether for too long. Interesting. Okay. Um... I think I'm trying to mine it and it's not working right because it's a whole it's a tab not a hole down so this is a rock that I could mine I could put this here this feels like a mistake but you're not doing anything like if I put a ton of uh I'm curious if I put a bunch of industrial destabilizer around if that would do something or if there's uh, something else to it For now, I think I'm okay with just taking that back. We need it elsewhere. Once we really get going, then we'll have a lot of resources to work with. But for now, we know that we're going to be building in upward directions, so the scrolling isn't so bad. All right. We're good on yellow for the moment, but we probably need more. We will definitely need more. We're actually not that flush on red, surprisingly. But, I mean, 8,000 is a lot, right? Okay. So, we can do the super pump. Station online. Fill it up with all the yellow I have. Ox MX. 
Yeah, so I could definitely speed up the red production if I just spam this. Since that one, I think that my right um, factory automation system uh, is doing just fine. So I can just spam this and that way I can get to my Charon faster. But I have to wait for it looks like this to finish up to get my yellows. And then we'll be good. Also, it looks like a few of these are out of fuel. Three of my destabilizers are out of fuel, so that's why it's feeling like these... Not, not much is happening on this side. But once we get the yellow up, then we can kind of recalibrate. We're just going to have an excess of flow of black, though, which was our bottleneck before, but I'm not sure if it will be any longer. I can turn black into both yellow and blue, I believe. Um, yeah, liquefied carinite sediments and, um, I don't know. All right, so we got plenty of yellow. Now we can do this thing, which is important. Do we, we, we still want blue. So all these really just need to be operating all the time, which means I probably should be making more of them. But let's focus on finalizing our plans here a little bit before we get into that. I think it's all a net pol it's, it's from what I've seen, I mean, there's not much point if it, it, it takes more resources than it gives, right? So while it might not give the most useful of resources, it does seem like, in general, it's giving a greater yield of resources than what you put into it, which is good. I mean, the thousands of black cubes that are flying out of this thing should kind of speak to that. But. All right, so are all these fueled properly? Ba -ba -bum. All right, so I'm gonna go back to what I was doing over here. Still don't have all the yellows in the world. trying to hint that the converters are really important, which I get. Um, what do I need for the yellow converter? Which I thought I made too many of, but now it feels like I have too few. Actually, this is super cheap. Yeah, we definitely want this. Pop those bad boys in. That's where all our black goes into yellow, which then can be converted to the other stuff. Cool. As soon as this one is done, now I have 18. <laughs> so much more black again. So that's cool. And yeah, I'll just keep these guys running. And I should have enough for the red one very shortly. Right on cue. All right, we're looking better on resources now. It's not all popped. Okie dokie, so we want industrial stabilizer. Fuel them up. And now we have two as automated as they're gonna be kind of things. I like it. Yeah, we just watch. Pretty nice. Alright, so I think our next goal is to get some more blue, which means we need more of this uh, stuff. And that will be coming from the Karenite Sump. 4,500, 140. Yeah, just get these yellows to pop and we'll be there. It'll be great. Yeah, so my job at this point, as I, I get more of these, is just to make sure that everything is fueled properly. If something's running at half power because of uh, fuel issues, that's way more important for me to fix than any individual clicking. But yeah, now we're kind of out of that manual phase. It still helps to have manual, but our planning should, our touches should more go into planning, operating these boys, that kind of thing. Alright, so I can make another extractor. I can. This one's about to pop some blue, so I might as well put some in here. And we'll see how much blue it makes. 1200, so about 300 or so. Not the most, but not bad. Okay. Yeah, so I wanted this. 
Um, yeah, there's, soon we'll have plenty of red with this one going de deeper. It's going to be like 600. It's like he pretty heavily in the red. Ooh, I wanted one of these for sure. I, mean, I think as many as I can afford, really, for that. Fill them up. No point in building it and then op operating it. So whenever I can afford it where it is operational, then that's what I'll do. Yeah, I'm trying to like look at the ratios. Like That's where I really wish the tooltips were more elaborate was like, I want to know if it's worth it, for example, to be clicking this one versus this one. It looks like the red has more density in terms of material because when I drop this, it makes a lot of good stuff, but then I'm putting a lot of black into other things, so I don't know. The ratios are pretty important in my mind to uh, kind of optimize the structure. And how much time has passed is actually a good question because, well, this is the kind of game you can get lost in a little bit. We're at an hour and 20 minutes. I think that'll be good for a good first episode. Um, I really do want to see what's going on with that big rock up top. Um, let's go ahead and just take what we've learned to try to quickly make, as all of these pop off nicely, um, into some beautiful, beautiful yields. I need more black more than anything. So yeah, these aren't going to be running full time until I get a lot more um, red mine, red mining, the beta piling in the respective oxidizers. Then I'll have enough black to... This requires 4,000 black, this requires 200 black. So this is not too bad. This one's pretty bad in terms of uh, how much black you need to convert to a blue. Anywho, um, now that we just got that bad boy, go bad boy going, um, we're going to go ahead and wrap this up by making another node relatively quickly. So I don't... I only need two spaces away in all directions to make sure that I have enough space. So even this should be plenty. 64 machines. Nice. So if I were to... Because they're the cheapest, right? If I were to start, I'd go... One, two... I mean, honestly, like this build is basically perfect. Once I had... Uh, removed a few things I didn't need. Um, I'll put the pump up top, the four fans, and then everything else can be a grid of seven different uh, extraction things. I need more black for that, though, it looks like. Again, fuel is the most important thing that I could be doing right now, making sure whenever I hear that little pop, that little sound effect, that means I'm out of fuel. I gotta be on top of that, make sure I refuel. There it is. All right, this guy's gonna pop. We'll be able to make everything we want as soon as the beta pylene oxidizer is done. It's gonna be great. I, I like it so far. Um, it's definitely a little bit slower start than I kind of thought, but you know, I've, if you want the game to last, you can't just jump tech to tech to tech. You kind of want to fine tune processes at the lower levels. Um, I think the biggest difference between this and like a, fac a standard factory game, Satisfactory Factorio, is the scale. Because you're limited, I've only built 64 machines. Like if I hadn't built more than that and, and a few episodes of Factorio, I'd feel pretty bad, but like here it's it's just based on the resource allocation, based on how limited it is. All right, that one popped. Let's finish this up. Um, we make a reverse valve. We upgrade it to an auxiliary pump. I probably shouldn't fuel it yet because I need to fill the slots or it will start putting stuff where I don't want it. So one, two, three, four. And then the chompers, the resonators, one, two, and I do not have enough for the third. I need a little bit more of the black stuff, which will come from here, but we can get this up and running. 
in the meantime, because there's no way that anything spawns down here. We cover the main areas we wanted to. There you go, and we're back at the top. This one's not 10 meters in, so we're gonna be seeing some yellow pretty soon, but not too much more than just a bunch of black to start off. So, um, let's check out the, the next blue is another double, so 2048, it's gonna take a bit to get to. Ooh, what's this? Oh, great note to end on here. What do we have here? Is it harder to mine than before? Usually they would have broken it by now, right? Is it immune? But we're at 881. Oh, it just has a, it takes a lot of clicks, but we got a hell gem. Green energy. And it is just intentionally like really hard to break. Which solidifies the idea you just want a whole eight grid of chompers. All right, what do we unlock? We got excavating channel. Excavates a lot of resources fast and places them further around itself. So it looks like it is just an extracted channel, the AO1, but it probably has a range of two. So it probably makes it gigantic, like a, uh, instead of eight, it'll spawn, yeah, significantly more than that. Um, it's interesting though, it costs no blue, I'm curious if it doubles on each one. Probably does. But it costs a heat whopping 65,000. So we're definitely going to need these uh, oxidizers up and running whenever we have the reds to support it. But that's cool. We found a new thing. We got a new tech. What was this? Helgem Destabilizer. So it's like, okay, so this is like augmenting stuff that we already had before. We knew how to make channels. Now it's like a super channel. This was, we knew how to make destabilizers. Now it's a super destabilizer. Again, requiring a massive amount of black ore um, and a decent sizable amount of the others, but it upgrades the industrial destabilizer, boosts the power of resource crushing process by 625 times if it's green. Otherwise it's no benefit. So basically you want one of these at each node. You don't want all of them at each node. You want like three regulars and one super. Cool, okay. That's pretty self-explanatory once we have the material for it. And that's mostly because by itself, these robots are really bad at breaking the greens. Like I can bring my extra clicks to help out the first few times I see it for sure. But if that becomes a more frequent thing as we go deeper, and we're at 900 now, then yeah, I think that it's something we're gonna have to keep our eye on. I'm trying to see if there's any other resource I really need right now, but I don't know. All right, well, it does, does seem like we've made some good progress. It's not exactly what I was expecting, but I didn't really know what to expect. Um, new game, came out on Steam just today. Um, it's like $5 if you wanna check it out. Um, there's like a discount for a few weeks um, for the fact that it just released, but yeah, it seems interesting. Uh, I'm curious where they go with it and if there's enough diversity gameplay to keep it interesting. But as it is, it's, it's not too challenging of a puzzle, but it's it's got enough elements at its like foundation to, to keep me interested. So I'll check it out um, at least uh, once or twice more. And yeah, worst case, we can always go back, go back to the Factory videos. But I, I wanted to upload something on the channel. I want to check out this new thing. And uh, I saw the I knew the publisher put out some good games before. So wanted to, to try it and so far so good we'll just kind of see how it goes over time last couple things to mention three more machines um if you want to read it cool if you want to otherwise we'll check it out next time uh, on episode two thanks for tuning in and see you next time I continue to build as I continue to grow the factory in spite of my own words. There we go. Just wanted to finish that up. Just a little. Oh, nice way to wrap it up. Boom, boom, boom. Cool. All right. We're good. We're happy with this. The factory will grow. We'll need a little more yellow. 
And I think that's enough to leave off on where I'm confident I know what we're up against once we resume. Until then, uh, thanks for tuning in. Enjoy your night.